Hey, I'm Brennan, and welcome to the Semi-Liquid Podcast, the official podcast of the Pulp Faction Network. Uh, it's the week of November 20th, 2016, yes. and we're going to talk about stuff. Yeah. This is the first podcast. That we are. Welcome. Who are we? Uh, to my left, I have... I'm Chris from Fistful of Gamers. And next to him... I'm Nate, also known as the Mad Artisan... And on my right... I'm John! It's John! You're also from Fistful of Gamers. Yay. Brandon, what do you do? Uh, I... <laughs> you are Brandon, right? On Pulp Faction, I'm doing uh, the games of time forgot right now, so... Yes. And I'm on Voyage of the Dreams through the Dreamscape. And we all show up in each Voyage other's Voyage on the yes. Dreamscape. <laughs> Voyage on the Dreamscape. <laughs> Voyage <laughs> over the Dreamscape. <laughs> Is, isn't it a recurring theme that I get my own show's name wrong yes. constantly? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh. So, we're going to kick it off today with yep, a topic. video <laughs> that popped up on the Disney Parks YouTube channel this morning, and it kind of melted my brain. It scares so, me. our first topic has to do with the new um, land opening at Disney's Animal Kingdom in Disney World, which is the World of Pandora. And, uh, Brandon, go ahead and play the video. Uh, we'll probably, we might, since we put this on YouTube, we'll probably just put this clip in there. Yes. So that you can see this. But mm. if not, just look up, uh, Pandora Disney Parks. Disney Parks channel is what it's on, so. Yeah. You can find it. We'll, we'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> yeah. I look forward to seeing you on Pandora. Well, not te came. Was that okay? Yeah. Not okay. <laughs> <laughs> now that that's over. Okay. <laughs> I've watched this video at least fifteen times. I know I've shown we, you. We guys wa- yeah, like we watched it at least five. like ten times yeah. right now. Yeah, and every time I just kind of keep going. That is an animatronic. Yep. Of a CGI character that approaches Uncanny Valley mm-hmm. way more than the CGI characters did in the movie. Yes. It's, it's, so scary. it's more realistic than the characters in the film were. It's oh, my, yeah. Creepy. When robots attack? <sighs> and uh, so we were talking about... Old crap right there. We were talking about... Yeah, I was looking at that. The, the way that they're... Uh, the way that the it's looking so lifelike. I'm <laughs> wondering if they have... If they're using like facial capture the same way they do for the CGI to then read into the movements for the animatronic. Right. Like, if they have yeah. enough detailed, like, servos and everything in the animatronic to be, like, when people move their lips for motion that is capture. Definitely the most realistic facial animation I've seen them put on an animatronic yet. It seems like, like, it seems like they would have to do it that way. It's yeah. really impressive. They must have put it, it puts even, that. like, Abraham Lincoln in the new version mm-hmm. here in, D- in uh, Disneyland or the. Um, uh, Cars Land Cars mm-hmm. as just way too real looking. I mean, it's not impossible because, like, uh, I'm thinking about it. Um, Uncharted, Naughty, oh, yeah. Naughty Dog. I think they say they do all of their stuff hand animated. Like, right. Oh no, hand animating. It's not unreasonable. I'm yeah. just more impressed with how detailed it is as an animatronic figure. Or, yeah. or not, not Naughty Dog. So, it was so you, someone else does all their stuff like hand animated. But the part that's really cool about it is. This is kind of the first actual hint of the kind of content we're going to get in the Pandora attractions. Because we've seen a lot of art about the lands, they've shown a lot of construction pictures, but we haven't really heard a whole lot about how they were going to produce the attractions. We knew there was going to be, like, a simulator-style ride, and a river cruise, and one other thing, but I had no idea they were going to do animatronics for any of it. I was expecting it all to be projections. Like a, and CGI. I was going to say, like a, um, with the Universal Ride kind of thing, where most of their stuff is... I was expecting it to be that, 3D or, like, stuff. Mm. or it would be, like, um, just kind of the only time you interact with the Navi or anything like that would be stuff that you don't... That is, um, videos. Mm-hmm. Like, you wouldn't see them, see them, or you would just hear them. Right? Sense. I was not expecting live-action appearance of them as animatronics, so this is kind of super melting my brain. Oh, God, and now now that I'm thinking about it, that animatronic means that that is to scale, that has to be to scale. Yes. 
which means that head that we're seeing, which when you're seeing it on a video, they have it shot so that it looks like a regular headshot talking to the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that head has to be at least like two feet. That's tall. probably why the fa- <laughs> you know what? That's probably why the facial animation does look that good. It's because it's, it's because so, it's it has so to big that they can get all that yeah. uh, all that tech in Where's there. Where's this located? Is it gonna be in it's, California? It's out Animal Kingdom in Florida. Is oh, okay. There. I, I remember when they first announced it and I was weirdly excited about it, even though it seemed kind of dumb. Like why would you make a whole land dedicated to James Cameron's avatar? Yeah, it was the yeah. same, yeah. But at the same time, because it was going in Animal Kingdom, it was going to be a land dedicated to the one thing about James Cameron's avatar that's awesome, which is the world building. The environment. Yeah. The, the environments of Pandora are the coolest thing about that movie mm-hmm. that apparently is about that's to become a multi-film franchise. And I'm pretty sure that is the reason why people had the that weird depression of after seeing it like yeah. it's because they wanted to live there it's not because the story was so bad <laughs> or they love the characters <laughs> it's because it's because they saw this awesome world and they're like i want to be there and i can't yeah i have a, to live in this crappy world <laughs> and the art and teasers and stuff we've been seeing for the way this land's going to be executed is really cool and it pays tribute to the one part of animal kingdom that was always missing when Animal Kingdom was built, it was supposed to have a land dedicated to fictional um, or mythological animals. Uh-huh. Um, and in fact, that's why there's a dragon on the logo for Animal Kingdom. Is there is there a dragon on the, the big giant tree? Yeah, there is. I think I f- remember seeing something about You've that. actually been there. I've actually been there. I haven't. I was in, like, middle school, but I was, <laughs> I've been there. But, one of the, but that land got canceled, and when they pink-slipped all those Imagineers... They took those ideas to Islands of Adventure, and that became their mythology land, which is the land that's now been rethemed Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Mm. But now we're getting something to fill that void more than just the yet than just Disco Yeti over at Everest of yeah. uh, fictional animals. And I think that's really cool because Pandora has some really cool animals. Yep. Like they even have like one of the things I saw them show tests of from D twenty three is they have parts of the walkways that light up relative to where you walk, just oh, like, like the, they do at oh, night. Okay. And I'm like, that's so cool. And it's going to look awesome. The question is, now, how uncomfortable is it going to make you because it's too real? That will be interesting to see. <laughs> yeah. It, it's opening next summer, which I wonder oh, if... Oh, that's I can, soon. I didn't even yeah. know it was that soon. Well, they've soon. been building it for like a year now. I remember, like, that. that's the thing about it being so far away. Like, I don't look up a lot of this stuff. So right. it's, like, if it's not happening in local uh, California Disneyland, you don't pay I attention don't to pay the attention, attention to it wanted. that much. So. Yeah, whereas I'm such a hardcore theme park geek, I want to know, even though I don't intend to go to Disney World anytime soon, I want to, Yeah. but I fully expect at this point I'm more likely to try and get to Tokyo before oh, I get Lord. to... To Florida just because of Mike living in Japan. Yeah. Right? Go visit. Because that's an excuse to go visit Mike as well. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, but that requires money. Yeah. And a passport. <laughs> yeah. And a mic because I don't speak Japanese. And free time. Yeah. Well, I have that. I'm a high school teacher. I get... Oh, sorry. right. You have, I get yeah. I get two months off in the middle of the... <laughs> that I don't get paid for. Um, that's the part that sucks about it. Um, anyway, is there anything else you guys want to mention about this? And, uh, uh, just to pull off of it, what do you think is going to happen with the... Have they announced... Like, I know that they've been working on them, but have they announced a date for the next movie? Oh, they haven't. Because they planned, like, five movies out of this thing. I believe they, he pushed it back twice now. I know, originally, it's, it's the next bit, It was supposed to be Originally, the next movie was ago. supposed to come out in 2015. Then they moved it to 2016. I bet the next one's going to open not long around the time that the theme park attractions are. Yeah, that, that would make sense. sense. Yeah, that makes sense to do that. Yeah. So the other thing is... Door release. This excites me for the stuff we are going to get in Star Wars Land. If they're doing stuff like this Because if they now, have this level of technology... And Star Wars Land isn't even this far along. No, it's a, so at least another year out. We're at least getting something on par with yeah, this. Cool. Or we should be. 
It also gives me hope that we're going to get, like, some crazy amazing Groot over in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yes. Theme. Ooh, with, like, all that facial animation and Fire everything. Groot. A life-sized Groot that would... Yes! Oh, that'd be so cool. Uh, with, a, with a rocket on his shoulder. Yes. With yeah. A, <laughs> with a, like... And have him have pretty good animation, too, then. That'd be yeah. awesome. Animatronic rocket. I would love to see an animatronic rocket in Groot. Although, I'm pretty sure they're not putting that much effort into the Tower of Terror theme. No, but maybe somewhere else in that Marvel area when they start working on that. Yeah, the the unspoken the 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 not so secret secret land of California Adventure, hmm. the Marvel land that everyone knows is going there. Well, actually, in the tower thing, I bet uh, there's that big open area that you're not allowed to go into in the in the hotel when it right, was Tower that, of Terror. Yeah. That's big enough space to have like an animatronic just standing there to talk to people. Well, the other one with that is we talk are so, at they, yeah they, talking at people. Yeah. We all well, they, oh. could, well, I don't know. It could be talk to people like, like Mr. Potato. Yeah, I was going to say like Mr. Potato Head or some of the newer things they've been building. You know, I meant I mean, as like as far as the characters go, they wouldn't really be having a conversation with you, more just kind of making fun of you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I am Groot. And yeah, and that would be his. <laughs> I don't know. Groot could be having full conversations with us. We just don't know. Yeah, we just don't know it. Because we don't speak Groot. Well, Rocket knows. Yes. That would be the yeah, best part. Right. It would be having Rocket make snide comments. Mm-hmm. And Groot, like, tr- just talking to at us. And yeah. Gro- and, Groot being, and Rocket being things like, I don't call him that. Yeah. <laughs> Look, just because he has a funny looking head doesn't mean you say it to him. Yep. <laughs> Come on, Groot, have some decorum. <laughs> Do I even know what decorum means? Yes, I know what it means, Groot. <laughs> right? You yeah. could totally have that kind of a moment. Um, but yeah, I'm way more hyped on this than I was when I last saw an update about this area. Um, and man, is that video creepy. <laughs> I'm concerned that people are going to take that uh, you know, the Pandora segment like a little bit too seriously and try to live out their, you know, depression filled fantasies. Oh yeah. <laughs> where they're going to like cosplay to the park and try oh, to like, you know, it. get yeah. more of an experience out of it than just like watching the movie well, in a dark corner. Oh, and, I know, <laughs> well, Disney has pretty strict policies about adults and costumes, so They'll get as far as the gate and get kicked out. Especially skin-tight, giant blue cat costumes. (laughs) (laughs) And Animal Kingdom is one of the parks that does not allow a Halloween party event, so Mm. costumes aren't going to be too much of a concern. Unless they make make walk-around characters, and that scares me. Oh, that is definitely scary. You think they'll stuff on Avatar with the sequels? In, oh yeah, they've yeah. actually oh, said already? that it will. Okay. Well, they said that one of them was one of the rides is apparently supposed to be something Star Toursy, mm. so that they can have so they can update updateability it. as okay. the new movies come out. Um, so there's probably that, but ugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I kind of figured this was going to be a short topic. So I'm not that worried about us moving on if you guys yeah. want to. Yeah. We can just do it because it's only a one-minute video. and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're saving saving something for the end So because yes. we're going to talk about it. It's a big thing for us. But uh, next thing we want to talk about, since I, I went to uh, Doctor Strange twice in the past like, week, and we just saw Fantastic Beasts. Which I've gone to twice in the last two days. Yeah, so <laughs> we've been exposed to a lot of movie trailers recently <laughs> that some of us hadn't seen. Like, this would be the first time we saw them, and we we're just talking about movie trailers. So I thought, let's just talk about, each of us talk about or bring up a movie trailer that we're excited for. Something that we saw that we're like, that looks cool. I, said, I vote for starting with Jones. I'm going to start Jones. with Jones. Mm-hmm. King Kong. King Kong? King Kong. Yeah, the second one. King Kong. Or is well, it just, technically it's called uh, Kong <laughs> Another Skull remake. Island. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if there. you could make so, a sequel to so King Kong. It, do you think it's a sequel to the, the Peter Jackson's King Kong? I think, you it's, think it's a... No. I think it's a new canon. You, you know what? Like, it's weird. Peter Jackson's King Kong is a remake of original King Kong. Yes. I feel like this is a remake 
of the eighties King Kong. Yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> the seventies, eighties, where, where he like goes on the <laughs> World Trade Center, which yeah. that's not going to happen. Yeah. So no, this one's not. Gonna, I don't think this one's leaving the island. Yeah, I don't. And yeah, I th- this is all going to take place. But it's the whole idea that it's like. 60s or 70s. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. very much got an apocalypse now vibe to it. Not not the uh not the 30s that it was or yeah. 20s or 30s that it was in the original. Mm-hmm. It was interesting because I know that this is in the same uh canon universe as Godzilla because they're trying to play it up to have an eventual Yeah, it's supposed to be in they're the same to get that going. So, yeah, yeah, legendary I wonder pictures if they plan to bring this universe more like Give it more than just King Kong and Godzilla. There's one other place it could go, and that's Pacific Rim. Yeah. And that Indeed. would be amazing. That would, well, I mean, I, I would <laughs> I just see love someone... to see Pacific Rim Godzilla, and it's like, yeah, King Kong as well, sure. Yeah, well, because yeah. they, well, they were already setting up in Pacific Rim the idea of drifting with kaiju. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How cool would it be if it's like, we get to have, like, um, Charlie Hunting, um, Charlie, uh, Charlie, what's his Day. face? Charlie. Or Charlie Day, even. Somebody, well, I was the other guy, the main character, mm-hmm. Charlie, whatever his yeah. name is, yeah. guy from thing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. How cool would it be if he drifts with King Kong and then they beat the crap out of Kaiju? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be so cool. Charlie Day's got to got to roll with Godzilla. Oh yeah, he would. Yeah. <laughs> Him and Burn Gorman together, all three of them. Yeah. Hive mind Godzilla. <laughs> I need to. Uh, I still have. And but that, okay, back on the topic of, yeah, of, King, of King Kong. Of King Kong, I'm really looking forward to this movie. It almost had the same feel as the Peter Jackson's King Kong in a sense, going into the jungle and then you know encountering King Kong. Right, and, the, guess, and we get to see the natives Kong. and all yeah. that. The other part that was cool is this King, this Kong, at least had parents at some yeah. point because we got see, giant ape siblings, skeletons. Yeah. 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 And also, he doesn't look, uh, I think, it, I don't think that was his handprint on the mountain. No. Because no. that looked way too big to be his It looked handprint. almost reptilian. Yeah, it looked huge on that freaking side oh, of that mountain. there's potential for so much cool. What if that's this? Godzilla's hand? Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, Godzilla has tiny hands. He's yeah, got Godzilla like, has little nub arms. Yeah, he could have been his foot. You know, yeah, he just stuck his foot. <laughs> I kicked his mound. <laughs> you know, I have claimed it as mine. Yeah. yeah, Godzilla's not been not above booting things. Godzilla has done drop kicks. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. rocket propelled drop yes. kicks. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. my my issue with this movie is there are so many big face actors in that. In this yeah, film. it's like I'm looking at it and I'm going, okay. I kind of see where some of these characters are fitting in. It's like the common the comedic relief is obviously there. You've got the... You With know, John Slight, C. Riley. John C. Yeah. Riley. Yeah. yeah. You have uh, John Goodman yeah. as, as, the, as the malicious scientist. John ish. Goodman's been doing a really good job of playing like, not kind of likable dad yeah. Yeah. in movies lately. But, and, then, and then it's like, you see Samuel L. Jackson, it's like, where's he fitting in now? So his, yeah. He's his in charge char- of the military. Yeah, right? his character is the general of the military troops that, or got, or something. Yeah, that were like, escorting him. So, so like, he's I mean, gonna there's, be. The... There's so many big faces, and it's like, and it out, it's like, there's so many more, like, big name actors in this. Yeah, in Tom Hiddleston, yeah. too. Be, beyond like, beyond the like the big names that they you know tried to throw together the last time. I mean, you know, Jack Black, not the biggest, but you know, he did do a good job in the film. Yeah, yeah. But I like Adrian like, Brody, Naomi Watts. Yeah. <laughs> and and then here's another uh, good question in regards to the film: um, Is Andy Serkis going to? Uh, to be, King Kong, to be Kong. King Kong again. <laughs> you know, there is one pose that is very much an Andy Circus. I'm pretending to be a monkey pose. I was, I was going to say. There was one when he turns and looks over his shoulder. That that looked mm. like it could have been Caesar from Planet of the Apes. If, it, if it's a CG ape <laughs> in a movie that has to express, how can it not be Andy Circus? <laughs> yeah. But like, you know what I mean? It really does. He like makes the same face he yeah. It's like it's straight up Caesar from the Planet of the Apes yeah. remakes. Or reboot universe. Yeah. Right. Which I still haven't seen any of those. Really? Yeah. That's I haven't watched good. Uh, you haven't seen Franco? Rise you haven't or... Seen, you haven't seen The Adventures of James Franco and his best friend, a chimp? Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen them. Yeah. I'm curious George. <laughs> <laughs> curious George 2.0. Curious George, curious. now he has guns. <laughs> no, there, there we go. There, there's, a, there's a flash animation on, on YouTube. <laughs> curious George of the Apes. <laughs> 
That'd be pretty great. Well, Since we're all next, part of it anyway. Next, next trailer. One. Next trailer. Um, okay, uh, I got Ooh, one. Christmas. Um, I'm interested, hesitant, but interested in the Ghost in the Shell film. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because I want to like it. It's like, you know, they've, they've got a good cast. The trailer looks good. I could not really get through the show back when, you know... Me either. When it was, like, airing on TV and stuff. I think it still kind of does every now and again. But, yeah. But I know enough about the story and the world of it that I could understand seeing this film mm-hmm. without knowing everything. But my problem is is I'm seeing this film coming out and I'm going, don't be Aeon Flux. <laughs> Which but, I, I, but okay, I didn't even thing. see that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, okay. Here's I, I know it's not worth Aeon it. Flux was terrible because Aeon Flux is bad in the first place. If you ever actually ever tried to watch yes, the original I, Aeon I, Flux I series, it. it's pretty awful, too. I watched it. Yes, it is, it is a hard watch. <laughs> and yeah. it's kind of but, weird and dumb and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But these, these <laughs> shows, as shows, tread a similar line. They do. Of the futuristic technology... Super cyberpunk. Yeah. Relationship with, with humanity and everything. And, yeah, Ghost in the Shell is more of, like, you know, cyber crime and whatnot. And, mm-hmm. and Aeon mm-hmm. Flux is more just, like, the crime of cyberism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> but, I mean, I want it to be good. And it looks like it could be good. I think it's so, going to be... I also think they tried really hard. Have you seen yeah, the, certainly. Have you seen the... the I've seen film. a video that is a side-by-side comparison yeah, uh, of the um, anime. anime and the trailer mm. showing how it is a shot-for-shot shot recreation of shots. Of some, yeah, of some, of some, some of the shots are almost spot-on yeah, at the same. Oh, it's pretty good. Uh, the part that worries me about it is that everywhere I've seen this trailer, they put a pretty heavy emphasis on this film is not yet rated. And the reason that scares me is, are they planning a PG-13 edit of this? Because how do you do that? It's it's like, I'm hoping it's like Deadpool, where it's like, we're not going to say that it's R until right before, <laughs> and then just be like, yeah, we're it's gonna, R! We're not Surprise! Gonna because you know. We're going to put <laughs> we're gonna put all of the nudity and blood in this thing. They kind of have to, don't they? It's, yeah. I can't imagine it's a them big actually part. Yeah. making the, a clean-ish version of this. Especially if they want to faithfully recreate that opening scene, where it, <laughs> I want that I want that shot of that guy going, huh, and then his head exploding <laughs> because she shoots him through the window. Yeah, that is true. But so far, it looks like they're getting the visuals down. To me, it's yeah, the world. Do they do they pull, do they pull off the uh, do they make the story like? edible in a like movie yeah well chunk. i mean are they pulling directly from the story of the anime it seems like they're form? like are they aiming for like the arise content that's been coming out more recently it seems like they're pulling the classic stuff it seems like they're pulling from a bunch of different sources a lot of the shots that they're doing are from the movie but mm-hmm. there's some like characters that it looks like like villains and stuff that are from anime storylines. Yeah. So plus, there's elements of the anime that kind of it seems like they must be a requirement if they're going to include them. Like, well, I mean, yeah. Like, like, they don't show it in the trailer, but oh, the, uh, I was gonna yeah, I was gonna say they there better be Tachikomos in there. The, and they better still have voices the spider tanks yeah, yeah. <laughs> and have little girl voices <laughs> <laughs> that are inquiring as they shoot things with yes. <laughs> machine yes. guns. They are fantastic. Um, no, but like my my question is is like are they going to be going with that? Um, there was that, uh, one of the big uh, storylines in the anime is that, um, is that, like, super dangerous cyber-terrorism yeah. that, that has the, like, the smiley right. face insignia. Oh, Laughing Man. I yeah. think I think they said they're not doing Laughing Man. It's one of the Because I know that's, it's one that's of the a very ones. iconic one. They yeah. have to limited that for a sequel. Yeah, they, I think they said yeah. if they're going to do Laughing Man, it would be if, they're, if they get a sequel. Yeah. I could see them doing that. So I know that's a very serious story for the show. Yeah, I think they're, it's from, uh, people are saying that the villain might be one from uh, the second season or from the, one of the later series. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, not, uh, not standalone complex, but the more yeah. recent stuff. The Arise? Yeah, I think. I haven't even seen that one, so. There, there's like a miniseries or something like that. I think there's like three chunks of it. Hmm. 
but uh, I might have to catch up on it. <laughs> Not that I want to bring it up, but I have to acknowledge that I've noticed that since the trailer dropped, there's a lot less people sounding really angry about the fact that it's Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like a good choice. And that's, yeah, that's I what, mean... It's when, when, the, when the guy who created it said, yeah, this is awesome casting for the character. Well, yeah. Like... Well, because of course... The, because she that looks way it the is. part. Yeah. And also yeah. because then you're getting an A-list celebrity yeah. as the main yeah. character. What yeah. you, gonna, you should want that. Yeah. An I A-list mean, celebrity that is considered visually attractive, filling a visually attractive yeah, role. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it would have been cool or, if they'd had an, if we had um, someone of Asian descent as the character. That but, would be nice. But they would have had to have someone of that same tier of actress. Yeah. There isn't someone right Lucy now. Lucy was a little bit role. too old to kind of fill that role. Yeah. Who's kind of like the the go-to from the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> and Because, I mean, if they were doing this in the 90s, she probably would have been. She probably could have, yeah. Yeah, probably. I mean, there's... um. There's, uh, who is it? Uh, she was uh, yeah, the masked samurai in Suicide Squad. I oh, mean, yeah. She's maybe not the right face structure. No. But like, that's the thing, honestly. I mean, once they give her the star. haircut, <laughs> Scarlett Johansson actually looks a lot like the character. Certainly. Like the major, yeah. Yeah. I also love that uh, I can't, I keep forgetting his name because I haven't watched Ghost in the Shell for yeah, a long with, time. With, with the Robo uh, eyes? Yeah. Uh, Buto or whatever his name is. Uh, that looks with his, so much. His eyes, yes, that looks so like, good. <laughs> it looks exactly like yeah. you'd expect a live action version of it to look. Yep. And the Robo Gations look like really cool too from the start. Yeah. Not like the film Robo Gation. No, <laughs> not the, not, not like the like actual that. movie called Robo Gation. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we'll probably watch that at some point. Yeah, that's a bad movie night in the future. Yep. But, yeah, uh,. Right. Well, what was the what was the next trailer? That we had we saw? a few other options. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you talked about one, John, and I talked about one. So Brandon, so, yeah, Brandon rock paper scissors. Yeah. Which one of us is going next? Uh, you go. All right. Well, Uga Chaka, Uga Chaka. Right. Yeah. It's not that new a trailer now because James Gunn dropped it on his personal channel like what three weeks ago. Yeah, it was a little while ago. Hype but... train, but the hype train don't stop. We already started talking about Guardians of the Galaxy earlier. Guardians 2. Guardians 2. Yeah. Does look good. I'm so hyped. That yeah, they... and, and I'm happy that they're going about it in the same way of like, this is going to be, you know, lighthearted action comedy, and yeah. we're not going to tell you anything about what's happening. Yeah, no. we're, we're not going <laughs> to, like, that That was what I liked about the uh, how they did the first one when they were doing trailers for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They didn't show any, like, here's the, mar- here's the exposition <laughs> Marvel plot of it. It's yeah. like, no... Here's your shots of funny characters and doing crazy stuff, and you're gonna want to see this because it's gonna be funny and feel good. Yeah, I'm really hyped. Also, I'm really excited that we know already an Infinity Stone does not play into the storyline. That's good. It doesn't. They are, they are at all. One, so what yeah. yeah. So, I, was gonna, oh, I was gonna say if it does, it would probably be the same one, like someone going after the, the it. Power Stone again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think what's gonna be is it's probably gonna be the first one that gets stolen in Infinity War. Maybe. Because Nova Corps protected it. Yeah. <laughs> and those would guys be, are, what, closest proximity? Because they're on the, the other side of the easiest to get to, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm just, oh, well, we already talked about this a little, but the best thing about that trailer is it just proves that Dave Bautista is possibly the best piece of casting Marvel's yes. done, period. If he like He if, is so Drax the destroyer. If Guardian perfect. if Guardians one wasn't enough, it's just that one little scene that they put yeah. in this trailer. <laughs> you to, just like need... Yeah, you're you forever. <laughs> just do this forever, please. I want more of this. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to find someone who's pathetic. <laughs> like you. Do you need a hug? <laughs> no. <laughs> you're, you're doing it anyway. Yeah. I also love that Star Lord has the uh Mustache from. He just kept his mustache. Yeah, I like how Chris Pratt kept the mustache from uh, Jurassic, uh, Jurassic World, World. Yeah. and now Star Lord just has the same derpy little mustache. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. He's got a mustache now, which means that he's like you know maturing or yeah, something. Age. Yeah, clearly it's supposed to be the idea. Gain that wisdom. Oh no, he has gained a mustache of power. Yeah, <laughs> a he power is... mustache. <laughs> 
That's what it is. It must be that he's taken a level in badass. That's because he touched the power stone. He grew the mustache <laughs> yeah. five minutes after the first He movie. manifested he, it. Yeah, he, it, like his skin <laughs> starts peeling off, and then when it reconstitutes after he lets go, it's yeah. a mustache is yeah, there. Mustache, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But the other one that's fun is we know we're getting Ego the Living Planet. That's, yeah, someone said That'll be fun. he's going to be involved. Uh, Any, like... Yes. It, like at, after knowing nothing about it, and then like going through and learning about uh, the like cosmic Marvel universe. Oh yeah, there's I, so like, much cool stuff out. All there. of after cool learning about all that stuff, I cannot wait to see all of it in. And Guardians is where a lot of it's going to show up. Yep, Guardians the only, was the, you the must first. Ray Bell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want just I don't, don't even I agree I don't even need an actual Beta Ray Bill story yet. I say yet yeah, because I think you should still give us. They oh, should still yeah. give us it, like the full blown origin story for Beta Ray Bill, because it's a great Thor movie premise. Mm-hmm. It would also be fun if they um, if they would you know if they were to do that and then have you know one follow up of just doing the God Hunter. The God Hunter storyline would be so cool. But it would be really hard for them to do that. Well, way. they have to get Fantastic Four back first. Yeah, because Galactus is part of it. And Silver Surfer. Yeah, um, but I mean. All you gotta do to make Beta Ray Bill work in the Marvel Universe is you make the Beta Ray Bill storyline start as a Cap Thor movie. That's a Thor movie, right? But the secondary actor you've got in it is Captain America. America. And we show Cap pick up Thor's hammer for the first time in that movie. Because he almost does in a couple other places. Yeah, Yeah. that that was a great scene in the... In uh, Avengers worried. 2, where, where it like, jiggles a little and Thor is like, well, oh, you better not. Because if anyone, but, and, but then, like, Vision no cells doing it. Yeah, and just like, But it's like, ta-da. if anyone should be able to, it's a recurring thing in Marvel's canon that Cap can wield Mjolnir. Mm-hmm. And has done it in the past. And the reason it should be a Cap Thor mo- slash Thor movie is the fact that that's who Beta Ray Bill is. He's his people's Captain America. He is a gem- genetically modified super soldier. He certainly is. And he's Thor, but from space with the horse face. Horse yeah. face and instead Thor. of having a, a magical alternate dimension of Asgard, he has a hyper-intelligent spaceship carrying his entire race named Scuttlebutt. <laughs> That's its name. That's pretty great. <laughs> and just for fun, they should have Billy West play Scuttlebutt, oh, doing the voice he did for Skeets with Booster Gold and Justice League Unlimited. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, hello, sir! <laughs> That, Yay! That would be good. <laughs> but back on topic of Guardians 2, I'm just mad hyped for it because it's looking like it's going to be another fun story. Oh, and yeah, it's sure. yeah. actually actively going away from the romance subplot yeah. with Gamora and um, Star-Lord. And we also know they're introducing another new main Guardians character. Mantis is supposed to show up in this movie. Mantis? And she's a cool character. I'm sad we're not getting Adam Warlock still. I, I don't know. Or, I was going to say, they're not going to do... They're avoiding the... Mantis's whole thing, right? I hope... I don't know if... And I hope not all of it. I was going to say, because that's kind of complicated and weird. Yes, it's <laughs> very you complicated also show, and weird. Um, uh, They'll probably do... What's like, from the um, from the group that picked him up, I... Oh, them. Yondu's actually yeah. traveling oh, with yeah. them. Yeah, Yondu seems see to be tra- on friendly terms with at least Rocket in the trailer. We well, see Yondu's supposed that. to actually be like traveling with them for a good chunk of the story, yeah. as is Nebula. Which, I mean, That's Yondu's, we saw Yondu's she probably just going to have all sorts of things to say to Star-Lord about, you know... Those will be some pretty good scenes again. All, yeah. <laughs> just Yondu being Yondu, yeah. Yeah. because it's Michael Rooker. <laughs> yeah. Um... So, Brandon, out of the trailers we know we could still talk about, what one do you want to bring up? Uh, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. That looks really cool. That looks real good. <laughs> and just in terms, like, I don't know what the story is, like, and, yeah. that's, and I'm glad that the... It's based on a book? It's, it's, based, it's on based on a, on a comic. Oh, oh, a long-going graphic novel. For but I never, I've never, i never read it, so I don't know, like, what? the story and of it. And it doesn't say, well, they haven't said what story arc of it it's going to be based off of. Yeah. And it may not be based off of any of them. But so, I, um, I like that they did what I said about earlier and did not give away plot in that thing and just said, 
here's this awesome looking world. Yeah. And here's our really characters, cool looking and here's stuff what they're gonna do. Yeah. Characters. Here, here's some action. Here's some funny. Maybe a touch of romance. Here's a good song. Yep. So oh we yeah. Movie theater. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a bunch of amazing alien designs. Yeah. Yeah. There's and technology so many and cool sci-fi things, which is to be expected. I mean, the director is a platform gun. Oh yeah, platform gun. The director oh, of cool. um, Fifth, Fifth Element. Element. Yeah. yeah. So cool creature design being a required element of the story was kind of expected. Yeah. And like Fifth Element. Pseudo bizarre world building is also expected. Mm-hmm. It looks like that. And I'm sure it's going to have some just really bizarre characters that show up out of nowhere. We do Dallas multipass. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm thinking more like Ruby Rod. Yeah. Oh, that would be good. Yes. He was on the radio somewhere. Oh, that would be hilarious. Just, just there as a, as a throwaway gag. But uh, also the uh, like the suits and stuff. Oh yeah, the, the space the suits are so the cool. The space suits that they're wearing make me think this is. This is our Mass Effect movie. Like, basically. Yeah. This is male and female Shepard teaming up to, <laughs> to <laughs> do friendship. Yeah. yeah. For a Mass Effect movie. That's, that, that could work. That's pretty, it's Shepherd. overall. Shepard. <laughs> Shepard. Well, I am the very model of a scientist celebrity. Yes. Yeah. I'm Commander Shepard and this is my favorite food terminal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Commander Shepard. This is my favorite planet out of a thousand. <laughs> but even on the then, the like, the like, <laughs> this excites me so much that it's that we're getting so many like big, cool sci-fi things. Yeah, and I'm pretty confident Guardians of the Galaxy is the reason why they're doing it. it could be. It's that in Star Wars coming back. Yeah, it's, it's, the it's, it's, the, it's those well, two. It's Disney Star saying. Trek might have helped too. Yeah, the <laughs> Star Trek reboots helped some. Yeah, and hurt some. Well, then helped some again. They they've done a good job of because while trying in the, to bring back the core idea of what Star Trek is, true. while also bringing a, a new light modern perspective. Feeling. Well, and a more modern yeah. perspective towards modern the idea of a u- the dangers of a unitarian government. What does God? I'm mean excited for more <laughs> science fiction. <laughs> but I'm just I'm it's, loving that we're getting all these big budget, yes. really fiction. interesting it's sci-fi. Great we get like space romps all over the place. Yes, it, it's awesome. Uh, speaking of other space romps, just throwing it out there as a throwaway one. We also got another space movie happening that we got. We watched the trailer for, which is Passengers. Uh, oh right, which we can cover really quickly. As yeah. I'm a little worried about the fact that Chris Pratt's gonna feel too Star Lord in that, but that's just because it's Chris Pratt in space. Yeah, and all of his characters can be best described as Chris, Chris Pratt, Pratt in situation in space. Right, well, that's space. what makes him good. I really yes, but you know what I mean. It's like yeah. Owen from uh, Jurassic World is Chris Pratt with dinosaurs. Yeah, Chris <laughs> Pratt taming raptors. I bet his character in um, Magnificent Seven was. Chris Pratt, yeah. the cowboy. Yeah, pretty much. Well, that's the yeah, I saw it. So, it was, tell me about it. Chris yeah. Pratt in Western. <laughs> Does that matter? No, because no, Chris Pratt is awesome. Fun. It was pretty great. So, yes. Um, yeah, well, I mean, he's just been an entertaining actor. Yeah. Since he, you know, exploded onto the scene with Parks and Rec. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he's been great in everything. So whatever. Um, but yeah, yeah I mean, that, Lego Movie, right? Just yes. his voice was enough. I yeah. still hope that in Lego Movie 2 he meets both other versions of himself that have Legos. <laughs> <laughs> I really want a the Pratt on Pratt on Pratt scene. Jurassic World yes. uh, Lego and Star-Lord Lego. Star-Lord Lego. Well, I want them to all talk to each other. There's a trailer that we didn't actually uh, watch or talk well, about. We should Lego talk Batman. about it. Oh, dude, did, have you seen the newest Lego Batman trailer? I've seen a Lego Batman trailer. There's, it was a there's longer a newer, one. There's, there's a newer one, one that just came out. That, introdu- that shows that Robin's a character. Oh, no, that's no, the one they, I saw. They, yeah. No, they've, they've had a Robin one before, but they have a new one. And it shows a lot that has of Batman, a, Robin of as a different character. scenes in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that are pretty great. <laughs> We that we got that trailer in um, Fantastic when, Beasts. Yeah, when we went to see it Fantastic was Beasts. it looks amazing. I mean, okay, again, there's another one where it's just the actor alone does it for me. Yeah. Anytime Will Arnett's in anything, I'm gonna watch it. Yeah. Whether it's Arrested Development or BoJack Horseman. Yeah. Or Lego Batman. Or Lego Batman. That's fantastic. It's Lego Batman. Or Lego movie with Batman. Yeah. <laughs> anything oh, where he shows up, he's great. Ah, oh, so good. But yeah, um, overall, there's a lot of movies I'm looking forward to next yep. year and the end oh, of this year. And we still have, like, 
what two, three weeks, and then new Star Wars. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we don't need to talk about that. We'll talk about that when it comes out. We'll do a we'll do a um, we'll get wrangled for that yeah. aftermath of Rogue One. Uh, talk about Star we'll talk Wars. about it after we've watched that one. Kind of like we wanted to do for Fantastic Beasts, but half the um, podcast hasn't seen it yet. So half of them, everyone hasn't seen it yet. Yeah, and we also didn't want to talk about it this quickly anyway. Mm-hmm. So so uh, we'll come back to that one in two weeks when we record our next one. Probably. Where me and John will probably yeah. still have not seen the movie. Woo! So but I guess, so maybe I guess, we'll get someone else on who has. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So um, I guess if uh, we're all talk, done talking about trailers, I we should think move on to the big topic. That's a big topic. Pokemon. Yeah. Pokemon. 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 Rule one, Pokemans. Pokemon Sun and Moon just came out, and we've been playing it. I haven't. I, you're the the least. I'm the least. You've played it the long. least of us. Oh, no, John, no, no, no. John, John has. has. Yes, technically. John, John is the least. John played the demo. John, John has played only the played the demo. Yes. Which means he's had to suffer through only being allowed to use Ash Ninja. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Lame. And get, bar- and get to be uh, borrowing your Pikachu once. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, spam water shuriken, the, the, which is the best way to describe the yeah, demo. that is exactly right. Water shuriken until you win. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Yeah. You're so over level. Yeah. Like here, have a safe pick. Here, <laughs> have an over level Greninja that has a special move that I don't no know, other has. John Slavery, then Nate, Brandon, and myself. Um, and you are definitely the furthest. Yeah, Chris yeah. is unquestionably the furthest. I've been playing it a bunch. Um, I'm approaching level 40 on my team, and the game came out two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and so, I, and I, Thursday I, night. And I stopped <laughs> last night to watch an entire 13-episode season of a show. <laughs> <laughs> and you still have yeah. To be fair... I actually, I think, have the second most hours on my game, but that's because you left it on. Yeah. <laughs> you that, yeah, I do that all the time. At least this time, I did it while plugged in, yeah. so it didn't didn't, die didn't lose all your progress. Um, but yeah, um, Brandon and I spent a good chunk of time playing it while waiting in line at Disneyland. So yep. you'll get to see some of that on my vlog. <laughs> yep. Uh, so what you want to talk about? Where do we start? Uh, new systems, new starters, new starters, new elements. Like, where do we start? Because there's so much there new with this so game. Much. Hawaii. Yes. Alola. 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 Let's, let's talk about the, the change. Anyone of else think it's the game? I'm anyone else to... think it's kind of weird that the greeting in Alola is to say Alola? Yeah. yeah they don't make you say Aloha. Face, Alola. Like, Alola. I expect <laughs> you go Alola. Alola. And as you like distract them like a baby. And <laughs> half the time the people are saying that, they also say hi to you. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's greeting. Greetings. greetings. Greeting. Hello. But, uh, I don't know, starters. What did everyone pick? Grass. 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 Okay, everyone picked Rowlett. We were hashtag team Rowlett. <laughs> oh, okay. So next question, did you no, name no, but John, what are you going to pick? Yeah, naming I'll, is good. I'll probably pick Poplio. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. I'm Combo gonna... breaker. Poplio. No, when I play Moon, because I'm playing Sun right now, and I always play both versions when a new Pokemon comes out, I am picking Litten for my second playthrough. I kind of am too. So. Litten was originally my first choice, but I just dis- I get disappointed with the Dark type for its final evolution, and I was like, Ghost Grass seems way more fun. You you know what's not disappointing about about Litten? That it's not a fighting he beco- type. He becomes a friggin. Fire wrestler cat, yeah. it's a, who he, does he, a, flame, a flaming moon salt as his Z <laughs> yes, move, yes. which is amazing and hilarious. And, oh, and move. before he does the moon salt, he summons a ring, yeah. a wrestling <laughs> ring around the no, Pokemon. I mean, I'm not saying that's that like that's right not up hilarious. there with Pikachu and, 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 and in, does um, the uh, does the friggin' Macho Man yeah. point in the air? Yes, he does. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to name mine Randy. Yeah, yeah. right, Mister Savage, Mister Savage. <laughs> Or just straight up that? Macho King. Or Savage. <laughs> or just, I might just call mine Macho King. Okay, Macho so, King. Yeah. So you're talking about nicknames on what we actually do have, right? Oh, yeah. I I uh, can skip this part because I haven't been nicknaming most of my stuff. But you didn't name Because my either. first go-through, I like to like memorize the names of the Pokemon, the oh. new Pokemon. Uh-huh. And if I nickname them, I completely forget what their actual Pokemon names are. That makes sense. I can understand the that. Only, the only one so far I've done is my Rattata is named Goku Black. Yes. 
I he, was there when you did that. Yeah, because he is the dark version of Radish. <laughs> <laughs> With his evil mustache. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Nate? What do you guess? So I am quite proud of my Rowlet's name. His name is Oliver. Short for Oliver Queen, mm-hmm. which Oliver is twist. disturbingly <laughs> accurate when you look at Rowlet's evolution line, because it even fits into the ghost typing. Because it's oh. like <laughs> it starts as a, as this dapper little fellow who becomes a spoiled fob, who then dies, <laughs> <laughs> puts on a hood, and <laughs> puts on a hood, <laughs> right, a hood, and becomes a, a terrifying archer. Yeah. Right? It's like, it actually kind of really fits that he's Green Arrow. Yeah. <laughs> yep. so, no, I decided to go the other route with mine, and I actually named mine Barton. That's, that was, I almost <laughs> Another, went that way. Because yeah. I was like, I was yeah, trying not to speck a purple on this guy. It's like, it would be too obvious that, to name him after Green Arrow, so let's name him after another comic could, book superhero. I, I actually considered doing a Hawkeye thing, but I was tr- struggling to figure out with coming up with an an owl or bird pun mm, related to Hawkeye. Yeah. So I just thought of one. We would name him Barnton. Yeah. As a yeah. barn owl. Yeah. It's a bit weak, but I It's get not it. as good. It's what, nowhere near as good as Oliver. What is his shiny color? I don't know. Blue. It's blue? Uh, Darn. It's close to purple. It's blue with orange. Oh, so it's Merlin. Merlin? Because Malcolm Merlin in the actual... Comics is that's his Merlin's costume, so it's still Green Arrow stuff. Why well, could it would have been great if it was red or if it was um, no, nah, it was blue or purple. Um, that would have been all amazing. of the shiny forms were leaked with the rest of the list. Yeah, no, it's more of like oh, really? a teal. Yeah. yeah, I've seen it. Even I shiny I, I've, I've tried not to look even, at anything. Even the fact that they uh, they confirmed um, through this leaked information that it was actually possible to be able to uh, catch the Ultra Beasts, because Ultra Beasts, they uh, they do have shiny forms. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that... But that's getting that way off was, topic yeah. from where we were going. So, other new stuff about the game... Uh, Z moves. Well, Ultra Beasts are okay, so yeah. Yeah, we can. That's where we can go back yeah. onto topic with the uh, Ultra Beasts. I haven't encountered any of that stuff yet. Me neither. So I don't want to talk about it. One, um, vaguely, and the the plot is starting to drive towards some sort of event dealing with them. Um, I don't want to ruin anything for. Yeah, I don't want to talk room, about it yeah. since I haven't gotten that they, far yet. They are tied in with the the serious plot. Okay. Because every Pokemon game has to have two plots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least. Here's the super serious plot of yeah. world ending. Yeah, the serious plot is is dealing with the with the Ultra Beasts and and stuff around like that, and then you know the the other plot being the the break from the mold of dropping out the gyms and turning the. I am trials so and that, excited there, about. Is that. there eight trial or eight challenges? There's Here's how it is. Seven. There are seven. Yeah. But there are not. Uh, but there are also four Kahunas, which are grand trials. So, so one Kahuna four? per island. The Kahunas so are like the they, gym leader battles. They are closer to a gym leader. Yeah, yeah. And the trials, you fight a totem Pokemon, which is something which is a special <laughs> stat boost, and it's a huge, it's gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and what's really cool is it's different depending on if you're playing Sun or if you're playing Moon. Oh, really? I they know. changed the, what? The yeah. Trials because there's a tw- there's a twelve hour time gap between games. Yeah. So yeah. Um, My question is, why did they decide to go for the twelve hour time gap? Like, it's just like, because... to help make it feel more different. Oh, okay. So the playing the two versions. What, what a little was more. the what was the last? Or I'm thinking of Gen Five when they had a city be completely different. Yeah, there's literally a completely version. different the black and white. Black, yeah, black, black and, and white, white had, had one like, little, here's like, a forest and here's a uh, future city, yeah. depending on what... Uh, and both of them were a side area that were only populated by people who, like, interacted with you over Wi-Fi or Street Pass anyway, so... Yeah. They were kind of weird. Did X and Y have, like, a similar, like, here's a big, like... Not really. ...environmental change? No. no I, pl- I played both of them, and they were pretty samey. Yeah. All the way through. So this is the this is a return to that that black and white thing of I think this is a step, step further. But yeah. The, yeah. the world itself is not affected by it. It it's tricking your system into thinking it's on the other end of the twelve hour spectrum. Because playing moon version, I'm playing at like three o'clock in the afternoon, and they're like, and the um, the people in the Pokemon Center are like, "Wow, you're up late," and it's like it's three in the afternoon. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the system, all it is. The system even knows it's three in the afternoon. It's, it's like, just. It's, I don't get why they couldn't just make it so that's like okay during you know these hours this game has the sun up during these hours this game doesn't. That's pretty much what it does. But it's just, they well, do well, it in a way where they they're tricking the system, the system into clock. thinking it's that not, it's not yeah. the time that it actually. That's is. I guess that's the easiest way to make it work for yeah. the mechanics. It's just weird that people talk to you like yeah like you the player are staying up late when it's right. it's noon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm still at the point where the time cycle hasn't even happened yet because I'm not out of the tutorial stuff. No, I, you you are. You're you're in the city now. Oh yeah, so, so I guess I'm just out of it. I just haven't noticed because I've only played during the day. Yeah. Since then. Yeah. Um, no, it was definitely weird um, playing on the first day and watching the sun come up in the game when it was just pitch black outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was weird. That probably was a little weird because you're uh, you guys are both playing Moon version, yeah. right? Yeah. Which is why I own Sun version currently. Um. <laughs> well, I, I got Moon version because I, you know, spoiled myself and looked up uh, the rest of the uh, released information that was on Sarah. Oh, so like which ones were exclusive? To yeah, which I wanted to see exclusivities, and for the most part, I was looking at Sun first because I liked the um, the box art Pokemon more uh-huh. of uh, what Soligo. Yeah. Sol Soligo. Yeah. Sogaleo, or something. Yeah, oh. something like that. As compared to Lorantis. Mm-hmm. Fire Lion, Sun Lion, Moon Bag. But what what ended up making me decide is um, uh, actually one of the Ultra Beasts that exists as a, as a dual type that I really like. Compared to the other one that you would get in the, the other version. version. Yeah, and, and it's, not the, it's not the ones that were in the trailers. It's, it's a different one. Ones. Okay. So, um, okay. Yeah. So the other one with that, it's like, what's funny is the Ultra Beasts don't replace the idea of legendary Pokemon in this game. They're still legendaries. There are. And That's they're weird. kind of fun. <laughs> right? They're the um, Guardian Pokemon. Yeah. Which really they, cool. they kind of feel like um, Generation 4's Lake Trio. Yeah, but there's four of them. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the same thing. The other like one is that, like, visual appeal, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I like them, though. The, like... The but fairy totem totems, guys. Yeah. I think yeah. they're awesome. Unfortunately, their shiny forms are all ugly. Yeah, they, they they're pretty really much, ugly. They pretty much take like a lot of their primary color out and make it black, yeah. which is a lot of what their secondary color is. Oh, yeah. so it's just yeah. They're also I, I they have, yeah. It's like I see a yellow monster and I want to paint it black. Pretty much. Also, I've got them in it. Their abilities are pretty lame. The I, electrified I field, psychicified field, grass field, fields, mm-hmm. whatever. But you know, uh, other things that are new to the game. I like little things. I love that when you catch a new Pokemon, it gives you the option to put it in your party and send something else to the box. Mm-hmm. If you have a full party. If you have a full party, yeah. Which is way cool. It is. I love it. Certainly that. is. Other other like little things to go off of that. Uh, yeah, the, and it'll uh, let you collect an item from a Pokemon you catch, even if you send it to your box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or once you've battled something once, you will know all effectivenesses against it. Yeah, you, That's don't, have, you don't have to remember all the typings. You the can... game also tells you any stat changes that either uh, yeah, yourself or your opponent has. keeps a list of all the debuffs and buffs. There's that a you part have. of me that kind of misses that that information is not something you have to actually understand yeah, yourself. Yeah, I liked the mystery of it, but that's from a from metagame a, perspective. Yeah, from a meta perspective. It's but like, for playing the game, I like how it streamlines it while also making it more friendly to new players. Yeah, and then the... Because um, like, Pokemon's kind of scary for new players at this point. It's a daunting franchise to walk yourself into. And this is, yeah, this makes it this, easier to jump in. Yeah. It, it does. This is actually a really good jumping in point if you've never played a Pokemon I'm game before. I'm interested for the meta perspective of the game. I haven't gone into looking into detail in it, but I remember seeing something about there's something like better than Super Training. Where it's it, supposed you to be like a carnival you, place, right? It's, it's the I carnival place, so, yeah. but you don't have to like continuously do a bunch of stuff. There's like yeah, some keep touching your screen. <laughs> there's some there's some way where you can if you have a level one hundred Pokemon, you can take all like reset all yes uh, like EVs. Okay, that's cool. And then um, yeah, you you wipe the slate clean and you start at a hundred and and you nice. yeah and you can just like add a more really which good. which is very counterintuitive to the typical EV. Training, training methods yeah. because EV training methods stop once you reach level 100 and any 
any easy points that you've missed, you have lost out on because mm. you're not going to get any more stat ups because you've hit max level. Yeah. Right. So you, uh, this is all like deep stuff. If you're <laughs> just coming into this, you might need to look up some stuff on some Wikipedia pages. So back on topic of other new stuff that's not super complicated. Rotom Dex? Rotom Dex ah, is pretty great. He's great. I really like him. I, 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 have, oh. I have a slight issue with it. Have, have you guys, either of you, gotten to the point where you can use him as a camera? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And you get to take a picture, and you get, like... Likes. You get, like... <laughs> the arbitrary likes. Well, likes and comments. But when I first, like, saw information in regards to this, I thought it was going to be, like, the Nintendo Wii U, where you're going to be able to, be able to, to submit post it. To Miiverse, and that's how you got yeah, it? Yeah, into Miiverse, and actually, like... I was kind of that? expecting that too, but instead you just get these generic messages it's, it's, from the game that gives you these points that make your camera do slightly more stuff. Because mine's level three now. It's basically uh, it's basically like a really small version of Pokemon Snap. Yeah, yeah. yeah it yeah. also just makes me even want the Pokemon even Snap. The shutter, even the Shutter Snap sounds, sounds exactly like, like it. Like yeah, it just makes me want a Pokemon Snap on 3DS. Yeah. Like a new one. Though. That you, yeah, well, a new one that uses like AR. Yeah, oh, that would be so cool. Good idea. It's called I'll Pokemon I'll, Go. I was gonna say all Pokemon Go. A Pokemon Go. Kind Pokemon of Go there. Snap. We actually talked about this at Disneyland the other day. Pokemon Go Snap. I kind of the one thing that's weird is because I've played enough Pokemon Go, it feels weird to catch Pokemon without throwing the ball at them. Without using your finger. Without having to like, use your finger to throw a Pokeball, them. like it actually feels weird to just click a button and it throw it mm -hmm. now. It makes me wonder if they could integrate that into one of the Pokemon games without it's it being... Like a, they have touch screen. I mean, think about the, the, the new Switch. If they're going to do stuff like that. It's multi-touch yeah. mm -hmm. touch screen. Yeah. But, but like, the 3DS has a touch screen, so why isn't yeah. it on it? The DS is... Because it's just screen. one more thing when you're just trying to get through Yeah, and the, the bottom Pokemon screen battle. is already cluttered with all of your other menu options. True. But, uh... uh one of the new things that I wanted to talk about was something that wasn't talked about a whole lot at, or at all before the game came out okay. that I just, that I, cause I wanted right. to go do all the menu options. Yeah. I did that QR code thing. Oh yeah. Which the QR I told code you thing guys is so about. cool. I mean, I had looked at it, but I hadn't done You didn't go, it. go into depth on what it actually did. I knew <laughs> and kind of what it did. Like you I, keep I catching Johto starters, which makes me jealous. Yeah, but, uh, okay. I had never bothered doing it because I was like, "Eh, this is just something I'll care about once I've beaten the game." And I'm worried about like doing meta stuff, like yeah. filling out rosters to breed out teams and things like that. Yeah. So uh, anyone who doesn't know about it, it's the QR code option that unlocks once you get Rotom in your decks. Um, you can scan any QR code. And it will like randomly generate a literally um, any. any one of the yeah. most efficient QR scanners I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah it, it, it works, works better than most QR scanners. You just point it at the and it just goes. Your phone. But um, you uh, it will randomly generate a Pokemon to uh, register in your decks. Usually, it's something that is in the national deck, so you won't be able to see it when you're first playing the game <laughs> until you get your national decks, but. Uh, they added that because, well, the one, I remember when they were showing the promo stuff for it, they did that because when you're in your Pokedex now, you can bring up a QR code mm -hmm. so that your friends, if they haven't seen a Pokemon, yes. can register that Which specific is Pokemon. really cool. I think that's really awesome. But yeah. doing this to get the random Pokemon, not only do you get to register these random Pokemon, uh, scanning 10 will then let you do a feature called Island Scan, which then picks a random Pokemon uh, from all of them. I think it's probably not legendaries and stuff. I think it might be relative to where you are. Yeah, it's also probably like which island you're on. The level of Maybe, yeah. things you can run into, because you're running into starters pretty consistently. Yeah, so I'm doing it on the first island that yeah. I'm running into starter Pokemon And from I ran into a Gen Rhyhorn, 2. and I'm on the third island about almost to my second trial. Yeah, so... It's a cool little thing that lets you get rare Pokemon that aren't on that aren't native to the island that you're going to find playing it regularly. These are ones that you would have to trade from other versions. So this is a way to like just randomly fill out spots in your Pokedex. I have a question. Since you are talking about Pokemon in Pokedex, how many Pokemon can you catch without the national Pokemon? How how big is the Alohan Pokedex? The Alohan Dex is well, 
Well, I don't know. What's interesting <laughs> is that the I didn't look it up. The Alolan have, decks is pretty. They have big. the Alolan decks, and then they have the decks broken down for each of the four islands, like X and Y was. Yeah. How they, uh, yeah. They have I the see. three sections. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Because so they it's, that. it's one, it's one like Pokedex section per island. Yeah, and you have like a, and I like that too. That there's a little percentage thing for, uh, yeah, you get entire a little thing percentage and update. each section how yeah. like percentage. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, so, something else that was cool. I don't know if um, either of you have managed to get a Pokemon all the way through its evolutionary states. Uh, yes, I did. But, um, Butterfree. No, the page, I haven't yet. The page actually goes and um, like animates and colors once you have all of the ones. Because oh, uh, when you so cool. when you get a Pokemon and it shows it in the decks, it shows how many evolutions it has. Mm-hmm. There are spots for all one, them. two, Ooh. or you know the many so, more for Eevee. <laughs> I haven't even seen that one yet. Like Eevee's in the center, and there's a bunch around it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. I just but love how once happy you, the Pokedex so is instead of it, in Instead general. of it having, like, the blue border and, like, the gray background with just, like, the images of the Pokemon mm-hmm. and the names underneath. The names, the bars turn red. No, no, they turn silver, and they get a Pokeball that spins next to them. The background turns red and gets fully animated. It's like the whole thing just kind of lights up because you've done it. That's so cool. And, That's the, cool. Um, and the Rotom gives you, like, this special message about, like, oh, you're doing such a good job because you <laughs> completed a whole page. Because they count one individual species evolution right. as, as a page. page. That's right. cool. I love how sassy Rotom is. Mm. Oh, uh, I, I wish he much... wouldn't talk to me every time I'm done talking to an NPC because sometimes he's, I just yeah, want to see the map. He reminds yeah. you, like, hey, guess we're going to go do this thing here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do like that it reminds you what the heck is going oh, on yeah, in the that's, story since that's it's good. pretty easy but to get distracted. You can in this tap game. the map. And he'll tell me. And he'll repeat that, So he that, doesn't yeah. need to tell me every time I'm done right speaking after. to someone who just told me. It's like you brought up a really funny one where it was like you were given two options, and it's like, should we oh, do yeah. this or this? I want to do both. I want to do both, says the Rotom. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I thought that was going cool. Off, going off the Pokedex, I wanted to talk about uh, a couple things. First, the um, uh, the region, the regional Pokedex mm-hmm. uh, for the specific island you're on. I like that they... Uh, organize that as here's a big giant grid of all the Pokemon that you can find on this island mm. that fills out as you see them, <laughs> and will fill in full colored when you uh, when you when you it. have it or faded if you haven't caught yes. it but have seen it. That's so. Cool. And also going straight into there, it's uh, the button presses. They line them up so that um, you highlight over the Pokemon, hit A, it goes to that like preliminary page that doesn't have their entry yet. Yes. Yeah. And then hit A again goes directly to the map screen where you can see where they are on the island. And you can just see where their spawn points are, whether they spawn in day or night, yeah. or regardless. And it's e- it's way easier button press-wise and organization-wise to fill out your Pokedex by finding where all the ones that you don't have are. If one cares to fill out their Pokedex. That's, yeah, that's my... You know, thing. Seven, <laughs> seven generations of Pokemon later. I, mean, I, I but- have... I'm tired of that. Yeah, I have an inroad I, though because my uh, my cousin uh, over the last year got a completed Pokedex, wow. so he has up until X and Y everything. Oh, wow! So I could easily just be like, "Yeah, just we'll ju- we're just going to spend like a couple days trading, so I can complete <laughs> have a complete Sun and Moon Pokedex Ooh, after yeah. I complete Sun and Moon." I've n- I don't think I've bothered completing a Pokedex since like crystal version oh me neither yeah that <laughs> yeah. was my last time <laughs> yeah certainly um but i thought it was funny that he went through he, everything including he used the um the virtual console uh red and blue version to do the mute glitch so he has a mute <laughs> i love that the virtual console versions of red and blue have all of the glitches and stuff in them intact and that they still let you and they still let you port do those over those effects like you can do the mute glitch and that you can do the rare candy um, missing no, yeah, missing, missing no, dude. <laughs> right. I love that you can still do that stuff in those. Although, I haven't played them very much. Although I'm pretty because, sure you can't do the uh, the turn off your system to duplicate a Pokemon. Oh, no, right. you can't do that. <laughs> Just because of how the 3ds works. But even though you, but still, you can do it. It's pretty cool that you can do most of the glitches that yep. were in the original games. Yet you can still import them into PokeBank without any issues. Yep. And what's cool about that is it also lets you bring in Pokemon into your Pokebank into current generation with movesets you can't get anymore. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's movesets that only existed in Gen 1 that are not movesets in later Yeah, because they took away those from those evolutionary lines. Yeah. Now I just want to do that with Gen 4 without it requiring a Gen 5 game. I love that, uh, like, right from the beginning of the game, I already have, like, four different ghost-type Pokemon. Well, they, that is, because yeah. there's a right place where you can the, get it. They're right next to game. a cemetery. Yeah. And, it's great. And also, uh, the, yeah, the grass starter turns into a grass ghost. And also, my second time doing that QR code thing, I got a, uh, what's the candle one? Yeah, Litwick. Litwick, Litwick. yeah. So I have... Oh, Litwick's, like, that evolution line's fun, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I have a question. Is Popolio... That final evolution, can it be male? Yeah. yeah. No! It's most likely going no! to be male. No, yeah. that's how starters work. I can't handle it. No, but I'm pretty sure... See, that was one of the spread. issues I, I See, it was so cool, though, just did a feat. The designs for, for Popolio and Litten's final evolution mm-hmm. is that even though they are gender gender neutral ish they're very gendered looking yes. characters yeah. yeah well i mean you don't associate the idea of a wrestler as as being female typically like a luchador style wrestler well it's, in it's some but, case. to me it's more of the like it's a strong completely y shaped yeah. body build yeah, but yeah and, most, and the fact that yeah, it is the, very the much burly shoulders. Yeah. also like if you break down the three starters final evolutions they're sideshow freaks they're yeah. a trick archer a strong man and a and a and a, and a, a, a mermaid, mermaid. Yeah. Vi- visually in, in some aspects yes but it's like you have to you have to admit that it's like the cat is a wrestler and not a strong yes. man. It's also a wrestler. It's got a it's belt. Heel <laughs> it's got a belt and it is a heel. It's heel. also a heel wrestler Pokemon. Yeah. Which makes me really hold out for what's its name again? Which the one? final evolution for Litten? Oh, Incineroar? I don't remember. Incineroar. Yeah, Incineroar. Yeah. Oh, that's no, pretty great now. No, Incineroar is the. F- no, 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 that's Pyroar. Yeah. Incineroar is, is a different yeah. one. Yeah, Incineroar, Incineroar is. Incineroar. Yeah, no. Okay. Too Inc- many roar names. No, no, no. <laughs> so Incineroar better wind up as one of the um, patch Pokemon for Pokemon Tournament. That would be and good. Here's that would why. Be good. You know what else needs to get in Pokemon Tournament that's not yet? Mm. Halucha. Yeah, Halucha. Halucha yeah. I want so, Halucha versus Pikachu Libre fights. I want, I want a tag oh, team Halucha system. Is- that would be so fun, so mm-hmm. that we can have like tag team wrestling in the middle of <laughs> Pokemon fight. Pokemon. <laughs> um, there's a disappointing Pokemon game, Pokemon Tournament, <laughs> which I still haven't played. I only tried played it once. It's fun to watch. That was the- here, right? Yeah, I only played it once here. It's yeah. fun to watch competitive Pokemon Tournament. It's I people who know what they're it. doing. Yeah. It's I fun don't. enough. No, no, I seem to figure it out. Yeah, but well, it's also I mean, like yeah, pretty simple. Yeah. Like, and it, it just kind of feels like it doesn't have enough. Like, it's not enough of a game yet. So, are, shall we move on to part two of Pokemon Topic? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good... Overall, Sun and Moon are looking really great. They really shake up the format for Pokemon. They are fun. Mm-hmm. And I'm liking that about them. So, part two of Pokemon Topic is going to be half Pokemon Topic. Half... May, half the Switch? Nintendo Switch, because we haven't got to talk about it yet after uh, it was announced and shown all what it is, which is exactly what we thought it was going to be. Yeah. Spoilers, we had a failed attempt at this podcast literally days before the Switch drop, yep, right where we speculated before. about the NX like crazy. Yeah. And it yeah. turned out, just like everyone else, it's exactly what we thought. It is it, a it's, handheld home console hybrid system, basically. It's a portable home console. Kind of. Is kind of what it's coming off as. Yeah. It's, it's coming off as that, but I have a feeling it's going to be... Nah, it's, it'll feel probably like... It's a portable you can plug into your TV. Yeah. It could be that too. Possibly. It's a portable you can plug into your TV, but it looks like it's going to be like... It's a portable at least, with... If not more powerful than Wii U, probably... Yeah. It's got to be more to powerful to a Wii than PS4. a Wii U, because ah, it can yeah. handle Skyrim. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, and it can hire, handle Breath of the Wild, which is supposed to be bigger than Skyrim. Yeah, Nintendo finally got their act together with Skyrim. It's like, uh, what was that, 2011 was when Skyrim came out? Yep. And it clearly it, was the HD remake, though, that was... Yeah, it is, oh, yeah. It, it is the right... Well, there's no way that they shouldn't do it that way. Yeah. 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 But anyways, so uh, not only are we going to talk about Switch, but in our discussion of Switch, uh, we have to bring up the... 
the rumored uh, the rumored third version third version of po- Pokemon for these ones. We have Sun and Moon, and it's rumored that a like upscaled like redo of these is coming out for the Switch called Pokemon Stars. Now a full Pokemon game. How strong is this rumor relative to Cough Z version? Yeah, and that's well, the okay, thing. That's Here's the other thing with that. Even even if this there's guys, nothing guys, to this rumor. I know Z version is pretty much like the remnants of that idea. Are Sun, and Sun and Moon is Z version. Yeah, pretty much. There's a part of me that wants to argue that Sun and Moon is in Generation, generation 7. 7. It's yeah. Generation 6.5. Z, what? Z version is the anime in the movies. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. But, but, uh, but Z version, kind of a lot of that plot line is inside Sun yeah, and Moon. But everyone the stuff. expected there to be but that's, another title. That's the thing. To I don't follow know. in the footsteps of, of every other Pokemon generation. I don't know if I remember... Except for, except for six. I don't remember no, five any, like, cheated. They, just, they didn't make a gray. They made black and white too. But they still had a sequel-ish extra game. Well, no, they weren't sequel-ish. They were legitimate sequels. They're the first time yeah. since Gold and Silver that a Pokemon game's been an actual sequel. Three but years you, later. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it's like, you have, you know, Red, Blue, Yellow for Generation 1, Gold, Silver, Crystal... Well, actually, for Gen 1, it's you have Red, Green, Blue, and Yellow, Well, if you want to get technical. You get two plus in the a, Japanese plus a third hierarchy... Game. Right, they did two in a third game. Yes, <laughs> but the idea was two and something more. Yeah, right. The the emerald, the platinum, the well, the black and white two. <laughs> yeah, black and white two filled that. It's really and it's yellow. It's yellow, crystal, emerald, platinum are the ones people yeah. think of. For yeah, that. and then the 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 minor switch up was the fact that they released two games for Generation Five, and then Gen Six didn't you know, get one. You know what it was? It's the prioritizing of. Uh, the remake. Yeah, the remake came out faster that time too. The remaking of yeah. uh, I mean, Ruby and Sapphire. If, if or as came Generation out. Seven, I am excited for Gen Four remakes. Yeah. yeah, I'm hoping we get a 3DS version of Gen Four, or at or least a, a virtual version. con. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, but then I want a Switch version of the Gen Two remakes by Gen during Gen Four. This is going oh, to some in, Inception. Heart, okay, okay, Heart you know what I mean. Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver are still the best games in the franchise. Period. Yeah. It's like they are the they have the most depth, they have the most interconnectivity between different games, and they have the longest story mode. <laughs> yeah. So even like... Yes, but Diamond Pearl Platinum coming in second behind them. Yeah. As far as, like, the best complexity of a Pokemon game. I love those ones, yeah. yeah. And without having the plot get in the way of the storyline of being on a Pokemon adventure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that was the one thing I hated about Black and White. Black and White was the... Yeah. Get off the pot, Nintendo. No, no, it, it was worse with where, Black and White, too. Yes, where yeah. I'm like, either tell us a story games, or make that. me go through the gyms, right? Yeah. yeah. One or the other. Don't gate me from one. Don't make to do me the have other. to do both in a way that makes it so I can't actually do either. Yeah, where you're constantly getting interrupted from doing the one that you just finished doing at the previous location to go work on the other plot line. It's like, oh, you've just uh, finished doing a gym. Um, so then, but before the gym, you had to like help out these people, and you go to the next town over, being the logic of Pokemon. Yeah, and. And you see that these people are messing around with something again, and you also are aware that there's a gym in town, and it's like, flip a coin, which one am I going to have to deal with first? Which one are they going to force you to deal with first? Yeah. The only cool, cool part about that was that it was one of the few times where they made it important to the plot that the gym leaders are important Pokemon trainers in their world. Simply because they were too lazy to ever be in their own gym. <laughs> Them. That is true. And by help them, I mean did their work for them. In more case than one. Oh, you beat it them already? <laughs> I'm so glad that I followed behind you and gave you encouraging words, instead of dealt like dealt with this problem like the government official I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, well, are they? They're, They're an officially some like, appointed position yeah. of some sort, and they do seem to have strong ties to their communities. Yeah. And they do seem to be authority figures of yeah. some kind. Yeah, they're almost the leaders of And even more so, Sun and Moon, who's in charge of the islands, the Kahunas. 
you yeah, are also, they solve the problems yeah. when yeah. the problems come up. They are in charge of solving the problems. And then if and they that's can't solve cool. the problem by themselves, who does it after that? The captains. Which, and then who does it after that? And most of the time, you. You. <laughs> But the captains are usually asking for your help, and they're doing things. They're, they're yeah. With it's like you. right. It's like the. It's what I like about the or. It's another one of those things that's making Sun and Moon so cool. Yeah. As a game. Instead, of, instead of doing double battles yeah, with the person, it's just doing a or a single battle. But there's two people. The captain is fighting the other guy, you and you're that? fighting this guy. Yeah. No. So, well, you don't see the battle uh, happening, but it's like you see that they're they're like, oh, you handled this guy. I've got the you know other what? Yeah, and if you go they're... and if you don't talk to your person that you're supposed to fight, and you go talk to the other one. He's like, buzz off! I'm fighting this guy. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> we skipped over ones. one of the most entertaining things that's new with this game, which is I am loving Sun and Moon's. Bad guy. Team Skull, yeah. Team Skull is hilarious. Yeah, the, the loser rapper kids. With all their, like, goofy... Yeah. S- can't you see I'm a gangsta? No one takes them seriously. And that's the best part about them. And I, and I They're just, the, like, a uh, bunch of, like, goofy idiots. I love the... That they, like, even fourth wall break. Like, <laughs> yes. There's, there's one where... I, beat, <laughs> I remember I that beat one. one of the grunts, and his, like, little thing that he uh, started saying to me, like... Face to the camera, yeah, me yeah. was that ain't fair. I was playing a different game, yeah. <laughs> no, or or the fun. one where it like he's like, uh, there's a there's a mean Pokemon in here. Uh, you better run, like we're gonna get out of here. And then it like cir- it like circle fades out, and then it comes back, and he runs back at the camera, and he's like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you something. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> no, um, they're 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 just fun. Yeah, they're really there was, fun. There was a. Uh, Multiple occasions where I've run into them, where their obsession with talking about bones and skeletons has made it sound like they're making penis jokes. Yeah, <laughs> I like that they keep saying numbskulls. Yeah, uh, with a like, like an LZ, at one point, like LZ, they're saying it with a Z. At one point, they were trying to make like more of like those like Pokemon references in regards to like having Pokemon traits, except they said something about being hard as bone. <laughs> And I was just like looking at that going, this is being told to a 12 year I'm a little bit frustrated that the punk NPCs are pretty much unmasked skull characters. They're just like most They have the same hair color, the, the same eyes, which is all you see. Just on without skulls. masks. Yeah, and then like. They so this is where they came from. They're yeah. all punks, but because there are like skulls. friendly punks, and uh, like there's there's one that was like at a swap meet that was selling like I'm sure Nate will get a kick out of this rare versions of shoes. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they're sneakerheads. Yeah, that's yes. hilarious. Oh, that's uh, awesome. But anyways, we were supposed to be also talking about the switch and stuff. So oh yeah, uh, that, 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 that was the thing that I wanted to bring up was like you, rumor or not, like you, if if this is true. What would you expect, like either enhancement wise, or what would be your favorite thing about having a finally a full Pokemon game, like HD on console TV experience? Well, there's Pokemon Stadium on it. I'm expecting. You just put Pokemon. <laughs> I'm expecting um, higher quality resolution for everything alone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Like just getting. Well, I mean, with, with already the improvement that some of you have got, yeah. like tangenting again of of actually realizing true scale three D, mm-hmm. yeah. where you are no longer half the size of a building when standing outside. <laughs> yeah, like that's cool, and, and not just that you're not your limited characters to. Aren't cheapy. Yeah. And you're not limited to cardinal directions anymore. Yeah. Yes. There, yes it's not. It's platform. not laid out on a grid. Which there makes is, it interesting as to how does it count the steps for egg, egg hatching? Because before it was a very simple. Well, because we were yeah, talking about that with the fact tile, that you don't yeah. have a bike. But you have your because um, the Tauros. Well, right. you have more than just the Tauros. But I'm know wondering if it's. Different ones. I'm, I'm wondering, wondering if it's I mean, now just distance. Do the riding Pokemon count as things that yes, for they hatching do. eggs? That's good. So, uh, so I pro- I'm pretty sure it would be distance. It's however, like. It's a calculatable distance. It's a calculatable distance, distance that they can then say you've taken this many yeah, steps yeah. in okay. this much distance. More than likely relative to the player scale size of distance travel. Yeah, exactly. But anyways, what I would like to see in a Pokemon for a larger scale system idea mm-hmm. um, is, I mean, 
it'd be great if we got a third game that would that would be able to uh, give us a, a new story element like typical third game Pokemon titles give us. Yeah. Well, Brandon, you and I have talked about this a little bit already, part of with that idea, which is the possibility of after becoming champion. Oh right, the creating thing that someone... a Pokemon League. Someone was like, "Well, oh, wouldn't it be cool if?" Uh, that's kind of part of the plot is that it, uh, the league is actually being made. In yeah, but yeah. so what if it's built then? What if what starts? if once you finish, it's? I'm not going to ruin anything, <laughs> but there is a a moment during, uh, I guess, when you're working on the th- first trial of the third island. Mm-hmm. There is dialogue in regards to. The plans of the league and everything that is going to go on. Yeah, I've no, seen I mean, stuff about that. But gyms, I mean, more in, more in depth than than you know. Yeah. Than just the information that was leaked in regards to oh we're gonna start doing this. Mm-hmm. Like, start they they gyms. talk about exactly what the plan is from the islands as to the purpose of it and leave it open to a point where. At this point, since I'm not far enough into the game, myself, you don't know if it, it actually could is yeah. actually be realized. It could be realized, and, like, and that's that's what people are wondering. Like I remember before it was coming out, was people were speculating. Oh, it could if, totally. If, be if in this game. game, yeah, if in this game, in Sun and Moon, you're going to go through, and then your your post game is the league is done. Go do the eight gyms. That yeah. that'd be now pretty cool if that happens. Yeah. But if it doesn't happen in this game, I want that in stars. In stars yeah, to and be it would like be, the... And it would be an interesting way to like flip the idea because typically the third game expands on on the lore story, not related to your, your gym battle experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, Whereas in this one, they would take and not give you any extra like lore story. Well, they can do it, both. Well, no, <laughs> but, but I mean, to, to introduce something, yeah. The, the standardized eight gyms the thing that we've already done. Okay, other things for a console version I would want is more advanced character customization. Well, the, the to like clothing stuff is no, a no, lot no. more interesting. I mean, thing. definitely, but I mean, like the fact that your face, face shapes, yeah. and stuff. <laughs> you're, whether like, you're a boy or a girl, face. your face is going to stay the same. Yeah. Like being able to modify your face, um, and they definitely have a, a whole range of different and models have facial that made. features, yeah. right? So, um, they, they do. Looked quite. Uh, yeah. The other one is not necessarily with stars because that's going to have to retain the sun and moon narrative. Yeah. I want my Pokemon World game. Yes. Gens uh, one through four. Exactly. Start where you want. Go through all leagues. Have it be that it scales relative to which realm you go to next. Mm-hmm. Just so that I can go on my my lifelong Pokemon journey as a trainer yes. with my Totodile. <laughs> Right. Just import him first. I want, well, I want no, start, no, no. It. start in Johto. Yeah. I want to start oh, in Johto. Yeah, okay. Go on a Pokemon adventure, go to Indigo Next, take a boat to one of the other places and keep going. Yeah. And have it end with you being in the Masters Tournament stuff that they're implying exists somewhere yeah, in, the, the, in Alola. The idea would be <laughs> would have the Elite Force and the Champions of each of their respective regions, and then there would be and a more elite <laughs> thing that sits above. Like, other people that are attempting to do what you are doing. Or, or even make it done. that it's like an online event thing like Splatfests, where you are battling a group of other trainers. Mm. But then it would be metagame, and it would be too hard to make fair. Yeah, especially considering well, Nintendo maybe, is notorious for not really building a very fun meta experience. <laughs> <laughs> With uh, the last ones. With uh, what, what is it? Oh yeah, uh, doubles. Doubles that allow Darkrai. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Dark Void. Dark Void. Dark Void. Right. Or that that doubles that allowed Mega Gengar. <laughs> yeah. Just, just like the, the Get general wrecked, idea son. <laughs> of, of doubles is interesting enough, but it's like I feel like Pokemon is a big enough franchise that they can have a doubles league, a singles league. league. You know, maybe even. You know, one of their triple battles, or their new thing, Battle Royale, which is four man free for all. That's pretty Everyone cool. brings three I, Pokemon, and I haven't, I haven't tried that yet, but it looks it's ridiculous. A, it's a zone that you get to. Okay. And um, I look forward to getting to do it with other players, though. That's going to be fun. It is kind of cool. Um, I'm glad that it's not something that's being like regularly forced upon the player to deal with, because 
it's very uncommon that in a Pokemon story narrative that you have uh, a decision from uh, four different directions. Uh huh. <laughs> Where everyone is uh, conflicted with each other. Not since, uh, what, Generation 3? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's yeah. cool. And I, and I look forward to messing around with it, but I'm glad that it's not like, oh, we're going to do triple battles here because uh, this is a restaurant. Yeah. That also, was kind of weird. <laughs> also, I'm just really hoping that Lucker shows up at some point. Oh, yeah, continue okay. Lucker. I want him to show up in every Pokemon game from here on out. Lucker is good. Because I want him to actually be the Pokemon Universe Doctor. Yeah. yeah. I want him to just be Doctor Who for the Pokemon Universe. That'd be pretty great. Even though... Generations has made it more like he is just the ultimate cop. He's, yeah. He's super cop. In the Generations super show, cop. he shows up all over the place. Super poker But cop. it is very much like the idea that he is, like, it's more like he's the uh, he's the John McClane of Pokemon. Yeah, that, that's pretty great, too. <laughs> he's, a, he's the loose cannon cop who doesn't play by the rules, awesome. who they always have to call in for every major situation. I don't know, I mean, he feels like a bumbling fool in the games. Yeah. Yeah. Well, which, he has a very is, Doctor Who moment yeah. in the in Oras, so that's why I kind of want more with him. Yeah, I don't know. I like Looker as a character; he's great. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, for home console, yeah, I just I just want those updated HD oh, yeah. textures. Yeah, like, I want an HD Pokemon like adventure you game for really a long cool. time. If uh, if in it, because I mean they've obviously proven that they have the technology to do it. The introduction of yellow version, where Pikachu actually sets his TV show sounding voice instead mm-hmm. of his in game sounding instead voice. Instead of his and yeah, fully the show, voiced Pokemon would be the show really cool. has so much stuff that would allow them to to be able to integrate that and putting the game onto a full console. Voice acting would be rad. Being able to bring in all the voice acting of the Pokemon so that they sound like the show to further integrate the the universe's theme of the Pokemon. Itself. Also, yeah. voice acting for the characters would be cool. That would be cool. Right? So, like, when characters talk... At least talk important to... NPCs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't need to be need like... The, we don't need the lady in the, in the Pokemon Center who's like, Can you, like... Yeah. Catch uh, a butterfly and show it to me in your Pokedex. Yeah, yeah but you know what? I well, better. Sure, you can save. <laughs> oh no, that'd be awesome though if we got stuff like that. No one would want to do. That. But you know what would be? I would. But I do. We Go better. into your options. But menu. you know what? If we, I don't. <laughs> we don't need those ones to have dialogue. But they need to have like um, Simlish Walla at least, right? Of just like. <laughs> right. But we better <laughs> get. <laughs> I like shorts because they're comfortable and oh, easy to wear. Yes. Yes. We gotta have Shorts Kid yell that at you there is a at the top Joey. of his lungs. I, I have run into Youngster Joey. Does he he was a... not talking about his shorts. But I does... have not run into Shorts Youngster Kid yet. He, uh, There's a Shorts Kid every yeah, game. But every there... game has a Shorts Kid. I haven't kid run somewhere. into him yet. There is a Youngster Joey. There is a Youngster uh-huh. He does have a Ratata. Yes. <laughs> he does. <sighs> But it can't be this. But it's not in the, it's the not top, top percentage. percentage. No. No. It's not top percentage. Oh, oh. I, I think my favorite, uh, <laughs> my favorite thing so far. I, I don't think I ran into it, or if I did, I skipped over it without seeing. There's a uh, someone posted on Twitter. There's a preschooler somewhere who, when she loses, says, uh, "Like I'm bad at math or something." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh-huh. yes, it's uh, it's one of the first double battles you run into in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and um, their friend says a generic like losing phrase. But yeah. yeah, she's just like, I have no idea how to do math. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to yeah. math. <laughs> it's, just, it's so good. <laughs> See, that kind of stuff's great, and that those are the great. things that are the gems of the Pokemon games. Is the weird things like that? that isn't there? Weird. Isn't there? Since Gen One, there's been like a guy who talks weird. Yes, like spit like. On purpose, like and he has weird dialogue. One of them is it's because in Japan he speaks in a different dialect. So they like he translated that as yeah. like someone speaking broken English. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, and it's, they also after they started producing games with international versions, uh-huh. they started making it that the where you could where you could, where you could where you could transfer content between international locations. Uh-huh. Ever since that happened, there's always somewhere a character. That speaks clearly like a foreigner. Uh, and uh, in like X and Y, I remember there was ones who were saying 
actual like phrases in other languages. Yes. Yes. They were saying like uh-huh. Spanish and French and mm-hmm. uh, other phrases. Another one that's fun like that is in X and Y, we get a guy from Alola. He just doesn't say it. Yeah, the one who right. says something about the totem that he has. On yeah, his, he's like, I got this thing. I got I, this totem. I have this totem figure. figure, and he's like, oh, I'm not from any of those places. Yeah. I'm from somewhere else. No, oh, and it Why? is cool, actually, too, that in Alola, you guys probably haven't run into them yet, but there, is, not. there is a type of trainer that are referred to as sightseers. <laughs> the cool thing is, is that the Pokemon that they battle with are non Alolan form Pokemon. Yes. Oh, cool. That's Specifically awesome. Specifically, ones that would have Alolan, Alolan forms, they have the non Alolan form. So that's like, cool. So there's like someone who has like regular Doug Trail without surfer hair. Yeah. That's like how I really <laughs> like that you, since you're from Kanto, have a regular Meowth in your house. Yeah, yeah. your mom has a regular Meowth. Yeah. I'm kind of sad we don't have a Growlithe. That'd be a cool one, Pet. Yeah, but... But you could get from, a Growlithe. From yeah, you can't Kanto. normal Growlithe. Yeah, yeah, normal Growlithe. But you know what I mean? It's, it's Volplex and Sand Shrew. Yeah, or like... Oh, you know what I mean? Those. I want to get those. Those are going to be cool. Yeah. Pun I that, intended. I want that Sand Shrew. I want that Sand Slash. The Sand Slash is cool. Yeah, man. Cold as ice. Shame. The shiny version. The Ice Age. <laughs> yeah. Get out. Get out. <laughs> cool body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, terrible. Oh, damn it. <laughs> so, is, that, is that our cue to like, <laughs> Yeah, are we stepping away are now? We, are we ending this? Well, okay, <laughs> back on the subject of the Switch, one, though. One last thing. Yeah, yeah let's talk There's about a couple a other things up. I would rather see if. Ra- I would love to see that'd be cool. Is like Miiverse integration then for that version? Mm. Yeah, or whatever the Switch's version of Miiverse is going to be. Oh, oh, yeah, that's... so that way your Rotom pictures can actually go on to Miiverse. That first. would be cool. Okay, and then additionally, the idea that when you interact with other trainers, like yeah, other players, thing. you actually meet them physically. Like their customized character shows up. Oh, right, cool! Yeah. Like and so, it, so the festival the instead of being space. instead of the festival being a. Uh, Here's a representation of you. It's an actual hub where you can see yes. people running around. Like it's an actual hub world that you can interact okay, with other players cool. with. That would be awesome. Um, that would require something like, like a more permanent server allocation. Yeah, but, but that's just it. They would use it in a kind of they could do, even if it's not live, they could do it kind of Meaver style. One or like the um, hub world in Splatoon. Yeah, uh, right. One where more. you just run them I mean, into... We don't need that because we have the the circus circle. That's what I'm saying. Like in the that circus is circle. that. But I want to make where it... Where people from the internet will uh-huh. just stand there and you can talk to them. But it would be cool if that's just also like you where do you it in talk Splatoon. with your friends live. If it were live, though. Right. Yeah. That yeah. would be cool if it's also where when you enter a friend's friend code and go, Hey, I'm online. Meet me in the thing. You can actually meet them. Like in the, the underground in Gen 4. Yeah, that was cool. Like That was one of the yeah. coolest okay. things about the underground in Gen pie, 4. Pie in the sky for uh, for the console thing, for uh-huh. Switch version. Have an actual, like, almost full-on a new... No, no, no. A full-on new Pokemon Snap. Oh, uh, like, inside it. Inside it. Instead of doing okay. just, like, looking through a hole... And a tiny little thing have like okay. you go to this part of the, of the, the island of the game. and you get like each island has its own like safari trail that you go Pokemon oh, snapping you go. on. That'd be awesome. That'd be cool. Yeah. Other things that I would want. I want them to bring back that mechanic that they introduced in Oras that was really cool and then they got rid of it. The sneaky. Of sneaking up. Yeah, that was pretty great. On Pokemon. No, now was, they sneak up on you. Yeah, yeah I, saw, I showed him that. That one. was like, funny that they do that. He, he, we but, were talking about it and then I literally got into the grass and like Pokemon was like, surprise, and she yeah. ran at me. I mean, they did that in, um, kind of did that in uh, X and Y, too. There's that one path where Pokemon can just leap out of the bush at you. Yeah. But they only did it in that one spot. And they, they do have other versions of the, you know, running you down in the tall grass that happen in Sun and Moon. Like, there are, there are shadows of flying Pokemon in some areas. Those, those, those there return. are yeah, there like are those. Pokemon that jump out of trees at you. There are <laughs> yes. Pokemon that hide in piles of berries. <laughs> I don't think I ran into that one. I've seen the berry piles though. Yeah, but that's gonna be that's funny. I'm just gonna go. Hey, look, berries! Surprise! Yeah, it's just the first time you interact with it, then it's just like your attacks. <laughs> Other things like that that'd be cool is uh, I want to be able to toggle on the run function. <laughs> 
like you could in uh, um, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. No, it's literally just, just a button. No, no need for that because ABT always be Tauros. Oh, yeah. be Tauros. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to wind up doing that once I get it. Unlocked. Well, there's uh, some paths where you can use Tauros or whatever else you're using that are too small for Tauros to fit. Oh. You do have to get off and walk with your own two legs. Oh. And you certainly can't use it inside of any building, like any major building. Yes, in. To- just Tauros through the hotels. Like. <laughs> I, also want, age. I would also want um, DLC packs that are clothing of other trainer characters. Oh yeah, because you've been wanting that for a while. I've been wanting that since X and Y. I want Gold's hat. I want to be able to wear a backwards baseball cap. I'm loving that in Sun and Moon you don't have to wear a hat. You can yeah. actually turn the hat off. I currently have that. Because it's either default baseball cap or or well, I'm using a good lady fedora, <laughs> so uh, it's a whatever trivially. I'm like I, I don't want my character looking more like a douche than he already does. Uh, I've, I've got this awesome because I've got the hat. tank top, the capri pants. It's like you put the the hat on and it's one step too far. He looks like he belongs in a Jason Mraz video, yeah. <laughs> right? He looks like and because I am super pale, I really look like I should be that white guy with an acoustic guitar at a party. Mm. That's what my character looks like right now. So I really love that I can take I can take the hat off. That was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want yeah I want I really want more trainer customization to the where like I can make a character that actually looks like me. Yeah, more or, face and eye. And, you know, or that I can recreate idea. Tantor from, <laughs> like, just straight up Nathan Explosion in a tank top. What would be fun right? is uh, <laughs> if you could at least do, like, uh, clothing customization. Because they proved that it's possible to do something like that. With Animal Crossing, yes. another Nintendo-owned franchise, mm-hmm. where you can actually create your own designs and and spread them to other players. That would even. be really cool. Like, you could share... Clothing with your friends and stuff. Yeah, and we'd be two minutes from a wiener shirt. <laughs> well, other things like that would be like. Of course <laughs> they would. You're or, saying that the okay. universe isn't already covered in dick pictures that people have drawn. This is also true. Look at the look at the meverse. Uh, maybe that's Smash why. It, Bros. Maybe stage. that's why it's not uh, fully integrated in the sun and moon. Mm. They don't want all the wieners in their Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, in their game for twelve year olds. Yeah. <laughs> the other things though that would be cool like that is. Like, the ability to do, like, you if Nintendo put Nintendo crossover stuff as costumes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd love to be able to wear some of the merch you can get for characters in Splatoon. I want a Zelda costume. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that'd be so funny if you could run around dressed up like Link. Yeah. 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 Or, Such like, cool I would love to be able to just wear some of the clothing they offer you, the Inklings in Splatoon. Oh, yeah. That, that's, There's some really awesome gear that looks very some Pokemon. really hipster gear. That's even but more But there's some subtle. stuff that's super Pokemon feeling. Yeah. Right? But it's not Pokemon. But it's just as weird as the clothing in Pokemon. Also, can I stop making my boy characters have to wear capris? No, never. That's the one that's driving me crazy. I'm a dude. I can wear shorts that go to my calves, but can they at least have cargo pockets on them instead of them straight up just being called capri pants? Yeah. Well, that that's why I stuck with default pants, because yeah. I think they do have extra pockets. <laughs> so far, that's what I'm wearing. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, anyway, give some cut off military fatigue. I think yeah. we are more than good on time for this episode. So I guess uh, whenever we do another one, we're going to try and make this a little more regular. I but, think we're going to aim for bi-weekly. Yeah. So, uh, which means every two weeks we'll get one of these out. So we'll. I think we'll look into uh, some podcast sites and iTunes, but. Mainly, this is going to go on the YouTube along with our other stuff that we're doing right now. Yeah, mainly video games. With the video games, and the and most of this podcast food. was talking about video games yeah, a lot. So, half of it. <laughs> oh, half of it, yes, fifty percent. Yeah, more least. like sixty. It was probably more like sixty-four. We talked a lot about Pokemon. <laughs> But to be fair, at one point, we discussed, all of us have discussed the idea of starting a channel just dedicated to Pokemon. Yes. Yeah. And we probably will integrate elements of that concept into the faction now. Yeah, so we'll probably have yeah. more Pokemon stuff as we play yeah. more Pokemon and because flesh Pokemon. that out. So, yeah. But anyway, this has been Semi-Liquid. Yay! Yeah. The most pretentious name possible we could give our podcast. And uh, we're the Pulp Faction. Watch our other stuff. Yeah. Thank Go you, Halibut.
day. Go on our YouTube, which is Pulp Faction, and... You can also check out our associated channels, Film Cooks and Mad Artisan Labs. Yay! Woo! Yay! See you guys!